according to the UN. Though a ceasefire agreement was reached after five days of violence, there's no indication of any end in sight for the conflict in Gaza. Because the thing is, sadly, frustratingly, this is not a new story. As UN records show, there was the 2021 Gaza conflict that killed 261 Palestinians and 13 Israelis. The 2018 Gaza March of Return that claimed 214 Palestinian lives and one Israeli soldier. The 2014 Gaza War, dubbed by Israel as Operation Protective Edge, that killed 2,251 Palestinians and 73 Israelis. The 2012 Gaza War, known as Operation Pillar of Defense, that killed 168 Palestinians and four Israelis. And the devastating 2009 Gaza War, or Operation Cast Lead, that left 1,385 Palestinians and four Israelis dead. You get the drift here. It's a seemingly never-ending chain of violence and chaos in which Palestinians bear the brunt of the casualties. Israel, of course, tries to frame it all as a war against terrorism, while Palestinians say it's really about racism and colonialism and occupation. But what if it's about something else as well? Good old-fashioned capitalism. That's what journalist and author Anthony Lowenstein provocatively argues in his new book, The Palestine Laboratory, how Israel exports the technology of occupation around the world. See, Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories has been going on since 1967 and its clash with the Arabs since 1948. But after 9-11, the conflict in the region took a new turn as Israel positioned itself as a key ally in the global war on terror. And as Lowenstein writes of the Israeli strategy, the message was unambiguous. We have been fighting a war on terror since our birth. We'll show you how it's done. And that they did, because as Lowenstein writes, Israel has developed a world-class weapons industry with equipment conveniently tested on occupied Palestinians, then marketed as battle-tested, cashing in on the IDF brand has successfully led to Israeli security companies being some of the most successful in the world. The Palestine Laboratory is a signature Israeli selling point. The Palestine Laboratory, he calls it. Lowenstein even details an Israeli defense company using actual footage of their drones striking in Gaza in their promotional video strike that may have, as global arms trade expert Andrew Feinstein told him, turned out to have killed civilians, including kids. But hey, it's a strategy that has bolstered the Israeli economy as Israel's defense industry is now one of its leading export businesses. In 2021 alone, the Israeli Defense Ministry reported arms sales were the highest on record, totaling $11.3 billion, a $3 billion jump from the year prior. And Israel sat on a list of the world's top 10 biggest exporters of major weapons between 2018 and 2022. Here's the thing. The benefits to Israel of a never-ending war on Gaza are actually twofold. Not only does the Strip serve as a testing ground and key selling point for Israeli weaponry, but the nations that purchase these weapons are then more likely to turn a blind eye to any abuses committed by Israel. As Lowenstein writes, Israel has sold so much defense equipment to so many nations that it hopes to insulate itself from any political backlash to its endless occupation. As long as the world's richest countries keep buying its weapons, Israel is unlikely to face any real political consequences for its illegal occupation of Palestinian territories. And there's certainly no financial incentive for Israel to end its almost year-in, year-out violence against the people of Gaza, because quite simply and quite clearly, it would be bad for business.